train sim world or sim rail find out what you should invest your time money and perhaps a little bit of your sanity into in this video we're going to break down both the positives and negatives of various areas of each game and see which one comes out on top if you want to see more train sim world and sim rail content make sure you like this video and subscribe we've now got a streaming schedule down in the description make sure you check that out as well and a big big disclaimer other than the pure facts, everything I'll be saying is subject to my personal preference and opinion and your mileage may vary. First and foremost, what will possibly sway a lot of you, root and loco variety. Now, we know that Simrel is an early access game, one that is relatively new to the market and they have a base that they're still building on. However, the fact stands in terms of root variety, that's just not something that exists right now. We've only got two routes, both in Poland, starting from Katowice, one route's going towards Warsaw and the other route that goes towards Sechzo. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Although, between the two routes, there is over 500 kilometers or just over 310 miles of track to explore. For context, a single run can potentially take around four hours. Now in comparison, Train Simod 4 has over 50 different route DLCs with news of many still on the way. These take place in five different countries, namely the UK, the US, Germany, Austria and Switzerland, six countries if you count the tiny bit of Italy on the Bernina line and seven countries if you count the upcoming Tadami line which is located in Japan. So clearly Train Sim World stomps all over Simro in this regard even with news of new locations coming. However in terms of running time you will very rarely if at all take a run that will last longer than around two and a half hours the longest route in the game is the 186 kilometer or 115 mile long castle to Wurzburg route so concluding route variety it ultimately comes down to preference are you someone who prefers the more realistic shift like experience restricted to one country or are you more of a nomad never staying in one place for too long for me personally i take the variety of train sim world over the running time sim rail provides it's realistically not very often that I'll have the three or so hours required to complete a run and that point is amplified when you find out that there isn't currently a possibility to save your progress. That's not to say that TSW's offering of the save game function is smooth sailing however. A 5 out of 10 for Simro here and a 9 out of 10 to TSW losing out on that final point just because I think it's high time we see something new, perhaps something from Wales or the much requested Netherlands and an increase in running time duration. What about train variety though? This is where things get a little more interesting. Even with this measly two route offering, Simrel offers us nine different drivable trains with a good balance of four locomotives and five electrical multiple units or EMUs alongside a plethora of different liveries. There's also a steam locomotive available to sit in and explore but isn't available to drive as of yet. Now as you might imagine, Trains in World once again does reign in this area with just under an incredible 100 different drivable trains with a mix of diesel, electric and steam also. However, there's only a handful of those trains that have more than one livery and to solve that there is the creators club where liveries can be shared by players. A 10 out of 10 to Simro here which is very relative to the number of routes and the 7 out of 10 for Train Sim World as there are various instances of repetitiveness of trains instead of modeling new ones alongside the lack of liveries. Who would have guessed it? We're discussing trains in this video. First things first, the modeling. Both games do very well in this area, there's no doubt that the trains in game represent their real life counterpart down to minuscule details. Yes, if you've had the opportunity to be up close and personal with a train featured in any of these games for a prolonged period of time, I'm sure you'd notice that a screw looks a little out of place and maybe the paint is a shade lighter, but there won't be issues that will stand out to the majority of players. I will note though that Trains in World borders on this point simply because some units in game are numbered to units that look a touch different to the model that was available. For example, the class 377-4s on the London commuter route being numbered 377-1s, although in reality the slash 1 variant looks a touch different to the slash 4. So if you're someone who wants every little thing to be perfectly in place, you might want to take note of that. 
Next, with regards to trains, sounds. Now, there's layers when it comes to sound, but I'll try not to go too deep into it. Many may disagree with me on this one, but I think many will also agree this one has to go to Simrail. For the most part, both games do do well, but when Train Sim World lacks, it can really lack. This is an issue that can be alleviated on PC using sound mods, of which unsurprisingly, many do exist. However, I cannot include those as I'm comparing the games as they come. US freight routes are currently on pause in Train Sim World as Dovetail are struggling to source original sounds so it does seem like their hearts are in the right place but they, alongside their various third party studios, do seem to struggle, even when given what is in many people's opinions grade A material. This comes from sources such as AP who are notorious in the Train Sim Classic community for their incredible collection of sound mods. I do have to mention, and this may not be the last time, a lack in consistency from Train Sim World. The devil, or angel depending on how you look at it, is in the details. For me, the sounds such as the good old clickety clack or when going over switches or points are what really tie the immersion together. Some trains on some routes do this fantastically, others not so much. And I say that bearing in mind that CWR or continuously welded rail does exist but that doesn't excuse the silence manoeuvring over switches and points that we sometimes get. This is especially noticeable in certain heavy trains, usually ones that haul freight. And when hauling these, you really want to get the feeling that you're maneuvering something weighing hundreds of tons. And unfortunately, that's an experience you just don't get every time. Simrail, on the other hand, do a relatively good job of this. Running sounds are great in terms of both the train and the track, Although with train engines, there is sometimes a noticeable looping that could be solved with some better mixing. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, rain sounds are yet to be a part of the in-cab experience. Post recording Adnan here, slight correction. So apparently there are rain sounds in Simrail, but for whatever reason, either my game is just bugged and I can't hear them, or they're just really, really weak and need some tending to which does seem to be the relatively general feedback that those particular sounds get around the uh, Simrail forums. Now this may or may not be a tricky thing to get right but it's something I would have expected to be part of the initial release. Train Sim World does have rain sounds although I really think they could be a lot better. Finally, with regards to trains, general usability and experience. Both games have an array of clickable working switches inside the trains, allowing you to have, for the most part, an unrestricted experience. I think Simrail edges Train Sim World in this by just a touch, but it's not substantial. The ability to both couple and uncouple is present on both games as well, as are functional safety systems. In the case of Train Sim World though, this isn't always done to the highest standard standard which is evident in many US based routes. Overall I think I'd give both games here an 8 out of 10. Features. This is an area that can make one game really stand tall against the other. Starting with Train Sim World, we have full timetables across every included route, meaning you can spawn in at any station on a route with the option of choosing to do so on foot or on a train and be dropped into a world that feels alive, with trains passing you and you passing them. Quality timetables, however, are not consistent. London Commuter, for example, is a route that as you drive through, feels like it's non-stop. There's always something going by. However, others are missing services, whether down to certain trains not being available or other factors such as time constraints. Some routes do feel like they're driven through by nothing but ghosts for the most part. Simrail, on the other hand, only offers AI trains on multiplayer. On single player, you will spend hours upon hours being the only train driver to exist in Poland, which is a shame. Speaking of multiplayer, however, this is probably the biggest reason that players have moved over from Dovetail's offerings over to Simrail. There are tens of servers available in different languages, such as English, Polish, German, Chinese and more, you have the ability to communicate with other players through a chat box or using voice chat. Servers seem relatively stable with the ability to handle around 100 players, though a few issues to note, sometimes trains look as if they're lagging as they're going past you and server restarts can come without warning, cancelling out potentially hours of your time 
if you had not yet completed your run. Players can also play as a dispatcher, taking charge of signalling and deciding what trains to let through the various areas of control. This is another feature that has drawn players over as train sim mode is yet to offer this in any capacity similar to multiplayer. Dispatching can also be done either online or in single player. As briefly touched on before, to make up for the lack of liveries, Train Sim World does have the Creators Club. This allows players to share liveries they've created using the livery editor, which is another feature that's limited to Train Sim World, to other players across all platforms. And speaking of platforms, Train Sim World is available on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, whereas as of right now, SimRail is only available on PC, but they do have plans to branch out onto consoles as well. Dynamic weather is a feature included by both games. Now, I might be mistaken, but I believe the weather in Simrel is tied to the real world location, meaning it will only ever change if the weather in Poland does. However, there is a command that players have found to circumvent this. Train Sim World's version of dynamic weather is dependent simply on what the game wants to do. However, it's prone to sudden changes that aren't natural at all, and in my personal experience, will result in a storm taking place over 80% of the time. I'll add user friendliness under features as well. Train Sim World definitely takes the crown in this area with its train introduction for every train in the game, which covers the basics of the given loco. There's even the training center, which as you may have guessed from the name, is for you guys to go out there, test your skills and become familiar with your train of choice before running it on the timetable. There is also a player assist feature where if the game senses that you're having an issue will provide you with help, although I find this very inconsistent. There is also an assist for safety systems, namely for the German PZB that I personally find very useful. With Simra on the other hand, bar the initial tutorials, you're pretty much on your own. If you get stuck, you will have to resort to internet sources for help, such as the Simrail forums or YouTube. I'm going to give Train Sim World here an overall 9 out of 10 and Simrail a 6 out of 10. My final main area graphics and visual quality. Now, to the hardcore simmers, this may not be a make or break for you, but to many of you, including myself to a degree, it does play its part. Starting with Train Sim World, there is definitely a hit and miss situation here. With the third iteration of the Train Sim World series, TSW3, a new lighting system was introduced. This was a huge improvement on what we had previously and was night and day in comparison. However, that's not to say that all was well. We come back once again to the word consistency or lack thereof. In some routes, an incredible job has been done all around, whereas in others, we have times when the overall scene is just too bright for comfort. There's also an unrealistic light leak in a lot of trains, where lighting from the passenger compartment floods the cabin even though the door is completely shut, and this leads to some especially unpleasant experiences when driving at night or through tunnels. Dovetail have also tried to replicate the light adaptation effect, which is the process of our eyes adapting to light after being in darkness, such as when we exit a tunnel, which was a good idea in theory, but poorly executed. They've implemented this the way the process would affect a camera, meaning it takes noticeably longer to adjust than our eyes naturally would, and this does hinder the experience. Night lighting is okay for the most part, nothing special, and there is room for improvement. Overall, I'd give Train Sim World a 6 out of 10 in this area. Simra, on the other hand, absolutely blew me away with her night lighting. When trundling along late into the night, you almost get the feeling that you're there. The lighting at sidings and depots deserve their own mention here. During the day, the overall scene looks well balanced with colours more saturated than Train Sim was offering but can come off as overdone in my opinion in very specific places along the routes. Overall, I'd give Simro an easy 9 out of 10 in this area. In conclusion then, as we've seen, it's quite the duel between these two. I don't think they're necessarily intentional competitors as they seem to target a slightly different audience, but that will always work out in our favour regardless as it gives us the players variety. So let me know down below which of the two comes out on top for you. If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more. This has been LWD Adnan, take care of each other, stay safe and peace.